dear dumb friends we have come to the second question and answer session so we have rece received several questions we we'll start the session with the written questions uh, we have five questions all together yeah venerable bhante with your kind permission may i ask your guidance for following issue when i meditate in the sitting meditation although i have sincere willingness to meditate when i start meditating i feel lack of effort to direct the mind to achieve the required mindfulness on the meditating object anapanasati what happens is that in first few minutes of sitting i will try to focus on the breathing but then after a while my mind start wandering and i become a mere observer of the wandering mind i lack the effort to bring back the mind to the breath as a result my hour of meditation at times become so frustrating can i kindly seek your guidance to increase the level of effort to direct the mind on the breath with metta and gratitude mm, actually you need to bring back to breath only if you get carried away by the thoughts now uh, only at the beginning the breath becomes sort of a refuge kind of an anchoring point for our mind but later once you establish fair amount of mindfulness it is not an essential part to bring back to your attention to the breath instead you can continue either uh, looking at the mind or either looking at various sensations various uh, feelings whatever it is so you can check when i mean there's a beautiful statement there you are observing the mind so there's a we are observing sort of a uh, restless mind so that is in a way one part of chitta anupasana uh, what is said uh, some um, vikittan chittam vikittan chittanti pajanati when the mind is distracted when the mind is fairly scattered so if you are able to know that so that is in a way mindfulness it is it is not actually there is a samatha approach where say you are, it is a must to bring your attention back to the breath that is also true and at the beginning that is very true but later slowly uh, even when the mind distracts if you know it if you know very well now the mind has distracted mind has little restless but if you are not a victim of that restlessness if you can watch it as a third person as an outsider then that is not a big issue but on the, there's a in a way there's a risk because this restlessness can grow if you start to feed it now if you are able to look at it in an objective manner without making it as a self without considering it as someone or something rather simply it's a restless nature of the mind then you are not feeding it then it may slowly as a result of that attitude then slowly slowly it has to fade away even the restlessness may fade away and ultimately you may be able to come back to breath if you wish otherwise even though you may be watching it if you have if you don't have enough mindfulness then slowly slowly you start to feed it then you may be supporting it ultimately you become a victim of this restlessness then you may be starting to talk and you know inner chatter and everything going to happen there's a big story going to start so you check what is what is really happening are you really feeding this restlessness and ultimately become a victim of it and now you are in a big story or are you because of this observation is this restlessness slowly diminish slowly reduce and ultimately completely fade away and mind settles so when the mind settles then you can know okay the mind now has settled no more scatteredness no more diffuse nature so you need to check that you need to watch that and see what is the result of your observation so coming back to breath is always possible always necessary if if you are, if once you lose the attention or once you lose your ground if you lost your mindfulness that is the ground with, on which you are playing if you lost that then definitely you have to find some solace you need to find some refuge so that is the breath that may be the posture swami in vahansa while meditating if there are certain agitating feeling like pain scratching what are we supposed to do are we to look at those feelings as agitations and continue with our meditation or are we to make ourselves comfortable and then restart our meditation teruan saranai 
Yeah, this restarting is a good feature in Windows. <laughs> so you can try that. That's also not a bad option. <laughs> uh, but typically, it depends on where you are. Say, for example, uh, assume that you are able to build up your mindfulness. At the same time, now there, there may be little itches and everything is happening on your body. So you can continue attention on, assume that you are keeping breath as the uh, meditation object and assume that you can maintain your attention on the breath and you can carefully adjust your posture so that all these itches, all these little pains may disappear. Then you are in a more comfortable situation to continue with your breath. So this adjustment has to be done very carefully without disturbing your continuous building up of concentration. On the other hand, if you presume that uh, there are enough concentration has built up, so mind is fairly in a good state, but now there is an itch has grown up. Now you can shift your attention to that itch or little pain and see whether you can observe it in an objective manner. So rather than considering it as a kind of a burden, as a hindrance, as an obstacle, you can simply watch it. You can simply see what is really there. Because that is actually Kayanupasana section, actually you are moving towards either to uh, Dhatu Manasikara, element meditation, or even to the Vedranupasana, where you definitely have to create fair amount of concentration and with that concentration you are ready to watch throughout the body. Whatever phenomena arising in throughout the body, you are there to watch it. Now this is the sec so probably you may be starting that phase. Actually, you have to take the risk and do it. Now, how are you going to decide, am I now capable to do that? Or is it necessary to maintain my attention more and more still with the breath? So that is in a way kind of a wise decision we need to take depending on the situation of your, of your mind or of your mindfulness. As a kind of a criteria, I can tell, okay, if you are doing anapanasati, breath meditation, assume that you are maintaining your attention at the nostril, slowly, slowly the breath becomes subtler and maybe you are able to recognize whether it is uh, longer, shorter and various uh, different, different characteristics of the breath. Maybe you are able to recognize the beginning, the middle, the end, even the slight gap in between the in-breath and out-breath, in between out-breath and in-breath, all these are uh, little information, subtle information, if you are able to recognize, that means your mindfulness is growing. Assume while you are doing that, now there is an itch building up at your knee or wherever it is. Now slowly you can see whether you can handle it. You can shift your attention to that itch and can see whether you can observe it without getting agitated, without getting distracted. If, you, if the mind gets distracted, probably you can shift back to anapanasati because it is that indicates you are not yet uh, in a good, good position or not skillful enough to watch it. So therefore, it doesn't matter. So you go back to anapanasati, further building of concentration. And uh, typically advice is, if you are able to build up concentration and maintain that for a fair amount of time, say 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, without much disturbance, even if mind distracts, it's come by itself. That means fair amount of mindfulness, fair amount of concentration is available with you. Then you are able to look at these various other sensations. So therefore you can uh, take the risk and see it. And depending on the situation, you can come back either to the breath or you can continue. Yeah. Garutra Swami in Vahansa. As Buddhists, we all believe in rebirth. Our belief is also based on Shraddha we have on our Tathagatya and Vahansi. There are also research carried out on rebirth and we see rebirth stories in newspapers and other media. Swami Vahansa, can we please know your views on rebirth which we strongly believe as Buddhists? Teruan Sarana. So I too a Buddhist, so I too believe it. <laughs> so actually, uh, uh, this is a good point. Uh, Basically, uh, one thing is that we are accepting it as a belief, but there are a lot of research uh, going on and already 
have done. Uh, Professor Ian Stevenson is someone very popular in this area who has done many uh, rebirth, you know, the re uh, reincarnation related uh, stories of uh, researching. And there are many, many stories, not only in Sri Lanka, but in various other countries. And those stories, those research are maybe not related to the Buddhist. I mean, they are, so I mean, there may be children telling their past lives. Uh, they are not Buddhist. There are certain, uh, many cases on such situation. And uh, recently, actually, I have seen one video uh, talking uh, one little boy, maybe at the age of 15 or 16, he, he has even gone to India to participate in a cricket tournament. Uh, and uh, once he come back, he was drowned uh, with several other students and uh, then he actually dead. And again, re he has reborn at some other part of the country. And at his uh, very young age, maybe five years or even less than that, he started to tell the old story, I mean the past life. And their mother and father and the relatives actually brought him to Kandy where the previous life incident has happened. And that, and once the boy coming to that place, then he couldn't recognize the, I mean, he is telling the house is not there. I mean, he was there in the past life. Now they are coming to the, the place that uh, ch child is telling, but the house is not there. And then they get understood that the house was abolished. And now they, that particular family is now living in another place. And now the group is going to that place. And uh, I mean, now this boy is able to recognize everyone. And even he has gone to the college where he has studied. And even he was able to recognize his uh, cricket, uh, you know, the coach. So likewise, these are, I mean, fairly trustworthy information. And he is telling, uh, I mean, I mean, you can't teach these things to a very little kid and trying to make a story, kind of a fabrication. Rather, these are things coming out uh, in an effortless manner. And sometimes, as we grow up, these things will disappear. That's also a possibility. And on, the, on, and on the other hand, there are other factors, not only this rebirth telling uh, s stories, but there are various other uh, data or the various other information in order to prove this. One, one thing is that, uh, I mean, why, why differences are happening between even twins? Now, if you are, if you are simply thinking about the physicality, if you are sim simply thinking about the uh, physical component of our rebirth or the, the, the uh, birth process, now when, if twins are happens, if they are assumed they are all, both are males or both are females, then they have to have ideal characteristics. But they are entirely different and they have entirely different uh, skills. And on the other hand, there are very little ch children who have extraordinary skills, extraordinary capabilities. Say for example, they are uh, talking about uh, very, very uh, high level teachings of the Buddha. There is, I think you may all have family with very recent, very little girl is speaking about sunyata and all these things. I mean, even I didn't know that <laughs> before I was a monk. <laughs> but this little girl is telling to his own father that uh, you are now, I mean, father is showing a, you know, incense stick and he is telling what, is, what it is and then father is telling just incense stick. Then little girl is telling that is the foolish view. <laughs> so likewise, I mean, she is like an instructor who has given <laughs> meditation instructions, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> and uh, telling this whole uh, very deep Dhamma to his own father, her own father. And there are other stories like, I mean, uh, say, uh, this, uh, some, some children, even they can play the organ, they have never seen the organ before. Once they are taken in front of the organ, they simply play it uh, extremely extraordinary. And sometimes they are speaking various languages. They have never spoken that language before. So, they, I mean, there is no real uh, uh, other reasoning that we can make other than taking this to the past life. That indicates that there is some link 
towards the past life, therefore we can't deny it. So therefore, uh, one approach is to simply believe it, one approach is simply to observe and uh, understand with various scientific research which has already carried out and uh, various other, these kind of uh, other areas which, which has only reason as the rebirth. So therefore we can, uh, uh, in a very rational manner, we can act actually believe in rebirth. It's a long one, Bhante. Yes. Theruvan Saranai, most venerable Bhante. Last evening around 6.15 p.m. I started practicing mindful walking with the intention of performing a seated meditation practice. Uh, sitting one, session one, walking meditation. I performed this in the veranda of the meditation hall for 30 minutes. Session two, seated meditation. Commenced around 6.45 p.m. using breath as the primary object. Within about 10 minutes of commencement of the practice, breathing became subtle and gradually I experienced a sense of calmness and peace. A few minutes later, I experienced a sense of a smile which lasted a few seconds. I continued to observe the state of mind as Bhante advised during last Q&A session. After a few minutes I experienced alertness, clarity and energy of the mind with a sense of pleasant feeling, happiness as well. I experienced the sense of smile again which lasted for about seven minutes. There was a twitch on my cheek at that time. I also observed only, only two thoughts from the time the breathing became subtle up to this time. As I had more time, I then started doing a simple vipassana practice reflecting on Trilakshana. After about eight minutes of vipassana, I decided to end the practice and open my eyes. Session three, mindful walking. Oh, As wait, then uh, we'll go to session two. <laughs> you want me to read again? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, actually, this just just be is vipassana practice. So, if we think that if we if if we are to always examine various phenomena arising and passing away and uh, recognize uh, trilakshana, whatever impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and non-self, that is true. But that is that is one aspect but once one after because of this uh, observation when mind uh, get into uh, some state where it has no associations at all there are no objects at all to observe then you simply be there you, you, you are simply being there actually in order to come to this stage you you are accumulating fair amount of uh, wisdom fair amount of support of wisdom through that Trilakshana, through that uh, understanding of the three characteristics. But once once enough energy is being built up, once enough wisdom being built up, then you will get into the this anisita state, unassociation type of state, and you ha simply have to be there. So just being there requires fair amount of uh, wisdom. So I mean, now if you ha if you know now Buddha explains about the Patisampada, Avijja Pacha Sankhara. Sankara Pacha Vinyana, Vinyana Pacha Nama Rupa. <coughs> now, Nama Rupa Pacha Salayatana, likewise he is explaining. Now we are, uh, now observation of this uh, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, non-self, actually these things may be happening at the Salayatana level, at the sixth sense base level. And uh, later, assume that you are now getting to the unassociation. Mind is not associating anything. Now, if you do anything there, that means you make some sort of a fabrication. That means avijja pacha sankhara. Some component in our mind, some ignorance in ourselves is telling thou it is boring, you need to do something. Why not looking at impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, non-self? So this is a kind of a fabrication. Now, we were in a sort of a very beautiful state, unassociation, non None at no attachment, we are in a dispassion and uh, no, no, no object at all, no clinging at all. So that, that, that 
is the wisdom. So that is the emptiness. So I mean, I can't say it is the exactly the pure emptiness. It's the root. It is the path to emptiness. So at the very beginning, we can't say the mind mind is touching the really pure emptiness. It may have some little uh, attachments, but unnoticeable type of. But this is the path anyway. So once we are plunged into that area, into that domain, so we need to maintain there for a quite while. So we have to expand it. Assume that you are building up fair amount of energy, fair amount of wisdom by observation, and then we'll plunge into this uh, unassociated state, and assume that you you could stay there only fifteen minutes. Then may have, there may be various thoughts coming, and you you miss the place. And now again you are building up energy. Second time, assume you are again plunged into this area. Now assume that you need to maintain it for twenty minutes. So likewise, you have to expand it. So then, while being there, don't do anything. So not doing anything is the lesson. So doing is a fabrication. Doing is a preparation. Doing is some sort of an activity, maybe mental activity. That is mano sankara. So don't make any mano sankara. So because sankara pachya vinyana, then the mind starts to tell you, okay, do this, do that, more and more thinking. More and more activities going to happen. Now here we are in a different domain. We are simply just be. Yes. In fact, Bante, this is the first time I experience such a situation. Right. So I thought there is more time to do something because now yeah. the mind more, is more fully time ready. To, more time to just be. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so at the thank you very much. At the end, what I did was so when I ended the session. And when I opened the eyes, I had high level of mental energy. I, right. I just couldn't be just without doing anything. So I started mindful walking around the hall. Right. And so with minimal disturbance, and it was so effortless, soft, and uh, very comfortable, which I never experienced before. Right. And so that is also I want to know really. I am a I, I just I am a beginner to vipassana. I did the course, and so I know little bit of that. So that may be something, um, uh, uh, Swami Nansi, if you can really advise really about vipassana now. After single ek ek kiya la dunna bhi kiya tar ek ek kiya nawa chilla ma husma ganne kote kiya na kiya la me yeh la taganna husma husme hi yati thadap bhavaya patavi dhatu sabhavaya. Me you don't you don't need to. Yeah, I mean it, it, that is how we were taught that. I mean, if you can feel it, it's uh, all right. Ah, hmm? uh, we don't have to think. Think exactly. Think, yeah, yeah. You, you don't need to. You need. To, you don't need to verbalize. You know. You don't need to uh, verbalize it. I see. You simply. I mean, keep the mind very, very quiet. Okay. And if you are able to recognize the, say, the movement of the breath, mm -hmm. the recognition itself is part of vipassana. Right. But but is that is the initial stage, by the way. I mean, okay, in yes. order to see rising and passing away of phenomena, we need to first know what is phenomena. Yes. So we need to know what are the elements. Mm -hmm. So now, even using breath, we can recognize what are the elements. Okay. So the breath itself are manifestation of four elements. Yes. So the movement is in a way the air element, the say the warmth. Of the breath, maybe the heat the element, heat element, yeah. and the the once you feel some sort of a touching sensation, yeah. that may be again the maybe say if you feel it gross, if you gross, feel it yeah. stiff, then it is the Why what you, you call the no the earth element. Yes. So likewise, various characteristics are there. You can yeah. recognize those characteristics using the breath as well. Yeah, true. But on the other hand, if you can observe these characteristics in the whole body. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are maybe various other more evident characteristics available throughout the body. Actually, observing this in the breath is very subtle. Mm -hmm. Very, you have to do it very carefully okay. because this is the breath itself is a very subtle phenomena. Okay. But on the other hand, if you consider various other sensations available throughout the body, various other parts of the body, yes, they are they may be very easy to understand the elements. Say you are left, uh, the leg is touching the ground. Mm -hmm. Now you feel hardness. Right. So that is the patavi patavi dhatu. Right. Now say you are you, you are able to uh, feel the the heat of the ground. If mm -hmm. it is uh, hot, 
then that is also that is a heat heat element tejo mm-hmm. dahatu mm-hmm. and say your leg is moving this, this movement is vayo uh, dahatu mm-hmm. and you might feel the heaviness of the foot or mm-hmm. lightness of the foot that is actually patavi dahatu likewise various different different characteristics can be felt throughout the body mm-hmm. actually for element meditation there is no any particular uh, posture in any posture you can practice Oh, okay. So actually now in your situation you have done fair fair lo- long term uh, anapanasati and now you are able to maintain your uh, you are able to maintain your attention on the breath and you can even watch the mind so no need to go to elements you can simply be with the mind observing how mind behaves and you can maximize that that state that we were talking before and even walking try to watch the mind now no it is not mu- not a must to go to kayanupassana now because now you can handle directly the mind once once fair amount of mindfulness is developed you come into a region where you can handle the mind so no need to go back unless the mind is so distracted you are totally lost then probably you need to go back to the body and to be with the posture and to be with breath and to be with whatever the sensation that may be possible but unless you it happen you can still watch the mind because if you are now doing chitta anupassana in sitting try to do try to take the same thing to walking definitely you can do it yeah so just uh, you take the risk and do it i mean there may be thoughts coming because uh, you may not get fair amount of concentration while walking because others are also walking your eyes are open so there may be thoughts coming and going but simply allow it allow the allow the mind to receive them and you are simply not disturbed by them you are not feeding them and let it let them go let they are coming you are just observing and they are letting go they are coming you are observing and they are going that when it is happening like that is very natural and you are you are you are you are get into more more sort of uh, natural kind of uh, mindfulness not not suppressing anything you are simply receiving but not feeding not supporting and they simply disappear and ultimately your mind settles then again you are in the same state where you were in sitting so you need to expand that that sitting the 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 skill that you are developing in sitting meditation you need to bring to walking session as well so no no need to do something entirely different at walking you can bring the same practice to walking as well yeah now i will talk in singhala the what i learned about it really I, we were told really ultimately vipassana api danagannawa then me ape siruta hadela tenne dhatu hay vargya ekatu vela මේක ඇත්තටම නාම රූප කියලා ඒ දේ අපට ඒක දැනගන්නම තමයි අන්තිමට අපිට කවද හරි පෙර ඉහත පස්සේ ආත්මිකද හරි කවරයි අපිට මාර්ග පළල බලලා මේ සංසාරය කෙටි කරගන්න. දැන් අමට ඕන වෙලා තියෙන්නේ ඒකයි. ඉතින් අපි දන්නවා තව මේ ලේ පර්සන් කෙනෙක් හැටියට අපිට තව ගොඩක් කරන්න තියෙනවා. ඉතින් මේ ආත්මයේදී මොනවද තව කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒ ලෙවල් එකට කිට්ට වෙන්න. දැන් ඒක තමයි කිව්වේ. So that's what I told. Ah okay. Uh, Uh-huh. that's why that's what i told i mean uh, in this very life you can you can continue the practice you don't need to postpone it to the next life so the all the necessary skills all the necessary teaching is readily available in this life okay. so you you don't need to postpone it so every all the resources are already available okay. all the resources are already available so you need to simply continue the practice so start to watch the mind and understand the more and more how things are happening and keep the mind very quiet with less inner chatter so not associating anything that means no no attachments to any of the objects now so that actually leading you to a next phase of vipassana so that's what i said so one stage is observation so various phenomena arising throughout the body you are observing that various feelings arising throughout the body in the mind you are observing that and again various uh, thoughts or the minds are happening in the mind 
lustful mind, angry mind, different different situations, you are observing them. So that is one phase. And ultimately they are telling the same story. They behave the same way. They are coming and going, arising and passing away. Now we are coming to another level of understanding. Once that is well understood, mind actually disassociate from everything. Mind, mind is not bothered about them. Mind finds its own kind of independence. That is another stage. That is what Buddha is telling, Anisitocha Vihirati. Now, even though you reach there, because of our past habit, now there is a tendency that mind go and attach again. Mind go and grasp again. So, but why then Buddha is advising us, Nachakinchi Loki Upadhyeti. Don't attach. Don't cling. Now he's advising us. We, we have recognized this uh, kind of uh, uh, unbinding, some sort of non-grasping, non unattached nature, but very temporary. Because of the past habit, habit mind going and attaching. Now the mindfulness will tell us, okay, now the guy has already gone. Then we apply wisdom. Okay, you release it. You disassociate that. You let it go. And come back. Where? The same unassociated state. Again mind released. Again mind go and attach. Again the mindfulness tells us, again this guy has gone. Again the, the past habit has come forward. Now again wisdom come, come forward and it will again disassociate, release the mind, is save the mind and come back to this unassociated, released, freedom, uh, kind of openness, so this, this state. So it's a kind of more and more maximizing this state. So then this being in this uh, unassociation, being in this release, being in this freedom, uh, being in this relaxed, peaceful state becomes kind of a part of your nature. Mind recognize there's a possibility there's a possibility for me to live without anything. So that, that we need to allow mind to recognize. So far, we were living with all the objects. So this is a, this is a different domain in a way. Now say for example, we are looking at this uh, building now. Many yogis are here. Now if someone is coming here, they simply recognize many yogis. But they have never noticed the space of the place. The space is unnoticeable. Everywhere space is available, but space is unnoticeable because our cells are more attractive, our more dominant. So our attention is going to the objects. Now our mind is very much like that. So our mind also has some nature, some kind of awareness is there. To this awareness, various objects are coming at one time say lust coming, another time anger coming, another time jealousy coming, another coming greed coming, another time jealousy coming, another time thought coming, various things. I mean uh, continuously so many objects. So we are in that. So there is no rest. It's continuously we are being bombarded by these several objects. But as a result of the practice, now practice allows us to little clear the path clear the picture so that now we are recognizing so these thoughts are not really entangled now they are disentangled now there are five thoughts here another five thoughts here in between thoughts there are gaps see there are gaps <laughs> so likewise the gaps are further enhancing the, um, now the gaps are expanding now you recognize okay there is a kind of a space even in the mind so this is a kind of a crack happens in that uh, path where you are recognizing this space kind of thing available in the mind. Space is not the Nibbana. What I am trying to tell is, so you are recognizing, I mean, there is a possibility for the mind to be free from objects, free from various phenomena. It is not the must to associate them. So this is another domain of Vipassana. So once you recognize that, expand it. Just, just be. Just be with this your awareness, just awareness is there, utterly simple, simple in the sense being there, that state is extreme simplicity, because nothing is there, because 
how we make things complicated is through by various objects so when when mind is atta- attracted to various things so mind get confused mind get complicated we like it but <laughs> but now nothing is there so mind mind go to sleep <laughs> so immediately the immediate results may be you go to sleep because it's very boring nothing to associate no enti- no uh, enticing no uh, stimulation so but slowly slowly we are trying to be with it we are trying to just just be without associating anything then slowly that is the place where buddha is encouraging us to be anisitocha viharati and uh, there's a tendency in the mind to attach to something to hold something then buddha is advising not to attach to anything so then we apply mindfulness wisdom and release the mind again come back to this freedom so this freedom has to be enhanced so that in one day we may be able to use this uh, ground to recognize various defilements recognize various uh, tendencies in the mind slowly slowly we are now attending to those defilements because this recognizing this ground is a must and working on this ground is the next stage so we have to well establish on this ground while being there now we are very carefully very clearly recognizing what is happening in the mind and slowly slowly we are reducing the defilements slowly slowly we are attacking the defilements we are uh, observing the defilements as a result the strength of the defilements reduce so according to the buddha teaching now if three defilements are faded away totally then buddha is telling you are a sotapan you can try <laughs> so we that's i mean that's the path so i mean we have a kind of a careful path buddha has uh, coming out and we have to recognize all these different stages and we have to apply mindfulness and wisdom if there is a good opportunity probably it can happen <laughs> venerable swami in vahansa when i when i started to meditate i heard that meditation is a big kusala karma for the person but still i am wondering how it can be if i meditate anapanasati or walking meditation we simply concentrate about breathing and walking raising the feet and stepping so except metta bhavana i feel about breathing and walking meditation help to keep my mind neutral because i meditate and think about my breathing or walking those thoughts are not for kusala side or akusala side so i feel while meditating anapana my mind come to a neutral situation no kusala or akusala creates am i correct <laughs> uh, so you can add some metta if it is necessary if you need more kusala <laughs> first you do some metta and so you are with lot of kusal and now you get into anapana sati and you get into neutral <laughs> so anyway actually kusal is needed it is not a bad thing uh, but as you said i mean uh, if if we are to say that uh, in vipassana we are get into a region where uh, kusal and akusal are observed in the same uh, same perspective or same context because even a kusal the kusala mind the wholesome mind it has a nature to arise and pass away even the unwholesome mind it has the nature to arise and pass away so this is a kind of a penetrating wisdom so this penetrating of wisdom has the maximum wholesome state so if you refer uh, velama sutta i think i have repeated this several times in velama sutta buddha buddha is uh, uh, keeping in order what is the gradual incre- increase of the wholesomeness i will just repeat couple of parts so he is telling okay if you are giving some food to a animal so there is a fair amount of kusala there if you are giving some food to a human being there are more kusala more wholesomeness 
and uh, more than that suppose you are giving to a sota panna stream in a more and more kusala is there and then buddha is telling more than giving to 100 sota panna if you give to one sakadagami more kusala more wholesomeness then if you are giving more than 100 uh, sakadagami if you are giving to one anagami more kusala wholesomeness is there wholesome state is there merit is there more than giving to 100 anagamis, if you give to one arahant, that is more meritorious. Then he is telling, more than giving to 100 arahant, suppose you are giving to one Pacheka Buddha, more merits. More than giving to Pacheka Buddhas, giving to a Sammasam Buddha, more merits. And giving to Buddha and the Sangha, more merits and uh, making a kuti <laughs> has more merits than giving to Buddha and the Sangha. So this is how Buddha is keeping it in order. More than giving the dana to Buddha and the Sangha, preparing a kuti for a monk and offering it because it does not belong, belong to himself as a person. It is for the whole Sangha in the past, present, future that you are offering. It has more merits. And then Buddha is telling, uh, like going like that, then he is telling, if one observes going, going, going forth or going for refuge, Buddha Saranang Gachami, Dhammang Saranang Gachami, Sangan Saranang Gachami, more merits. So that means you are wholeheartedly, very honestly, you are telling, I go for refuge of the Buddha, I go for refuge of the Dhamma. I go for refuge of the Sangha. Buddha is telling more merits. And then Buddha is telling, willingly, honestly, you are abstaining from killing. Panati pata veramani sikkhapadang samadhyami. More merits. Willingly, honestly, you are abstaining from stealing. Adinnadana veramani sikkhapadang samadhyami. More merits. Willingly, honestly, you abstain from sexual misconduct. More merits. You avoid from falsehood. Musavada veramani sikkhapadan samadhyam. You avoid from uh, using uh, drugs and uh, alcohol and all these things. Suramere majjapama dattana veramani sikkhapadan samadhyam. So all these precepts are generating more and more merits. Then Buddha is telling about metta. Even if one is able to practice metta uh, for a very little moment, that is more meritorious. Then ultimately he is telling, if one is recognizing the impermanence, if one understands the impermanence even a fraction of a second, that is more meritorious. So he is keeping the vipassana kusala as the highest. So this is the path. So actually we, we, you can't tell that, so therefore we have to give up all the other practical or other giving dana and all these things, we let's just do every everyone vipassana. So don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is needed. I mean, it's a kind of a gradual path. But you need to understand now where Buddha has kept the vipassana kusala. That is a kind of a adhikusala. That's a kind of a different kind of understanding which is based on the wisdom. Because all these previous activities are based on some ignorance. That is a personal view. There, are, there is ignorance there. So there is rebirth is there. So there are a lot of other, I mean, benefits as well as the continuation of the sansara. But if you are to stop the sansara, if you are to stop the rebirth, you need fair amount of uh, very powerful merit. So that is the Vipassana Kusala, where you, you are breaking the cycle. Where you are understanding how th the karma is generated. Now we are getting to a domain where no karma is generated. You are trying to uh, spend the previous karma and not generating new karma. Through vipassana, one yog the yogi is trying his best not to accumulate new karma, rather to uh, just live a life very merito very skillful, very wise, and uh, going away from sansara, stopping the rebirth and penetrating the ignorance, no more ignorance. So likewise, this is another domain. So therefore, 
even though anapanasati appears like boring and you are not doing any any merit not doing anything itself is in a way a merit because suppose you are simply being with your breath now there are various skillful qualities developed because of that practice in your in your mind so assume that you are bringing again and again your attention to the breath now you can simply be with that so how skillful that is rather than simply indulge in the past something has happened in the past it may be say some lustful activity maybe some hatred related to something and you are mostly we were we are enjoying that instead of doing that now we are simply being with this very innocent very mindful very pleasant very simple state of my, my breath so that is more conti- more producing or more uh, uh, contributing to the mindfulness to the sati and then assume that you are collecting your attention to that now you are developing the samadhi concentration and in order to continue this practice you need fair amount of effort you are you are developing the uh, virya so if one is developing the faculties the you you know the indriya buddha is telling he is like a calf who is simply following the cow and trying to cross the river is called uh, uh, saddhanusari or panya uh, this uh, dhamma anusari so likewise if one is get into this development of the faculties saddha virya sati samadhi panya so that's a entirely different approach now previously we were simply following the various rituals and you are going to the temple simply praying simply believing now you are simply practically doing it you are practically developing these skills in your own mind so i would say it's a big difference actually now when one is developing these skills that buddha has recommended in his own mind so we are now in a different uh, layer in other sense so now the generation of these skillful skills these uh, faculties then it will come to the powers the bala and it will come to the bodhangas the enlightenment factors and ultimately they become the path factors which is penetrating the or cutting through the ignorance and coming to the wisdom and that is that is in a way the path so don't uh, don't uh, underestimate the anapanasati or any of the meditation technique because uh, it appears like we are not doing anything but doing anything has the root of ignorance avijja paccha sankara so bandhi dhamma jeeva used to say extracting from something each will is ill will <laughs> so if you think and do something it has some root rooted ignorance you are doing something i am doing something so some ignorance is there so even though you may be doing lot of meritorious deeds to the to say huge meritorious deeds lot of sound lot of people lot of sound lot of elephants <laughs> many people very colorful many loud speakers <laughs> and here you are coming and sitting cross legged very calm very peaceful at kalalgoda nobody bothers but generating the maximum merit <laughs> don't un- underestimate that yeah yeah that's all actually we have received uh, only those so if you have any other question uh, we can spend couple of few more minutes Okay, no question. Everything solved. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sarna, so can you, uh, could you please explain uh, me the, uh, the house will reduce the Anusaya Dharma? Yesterday you said yeah. the Anusaya. Yeah, actually, By yes. I mean, this... Uh, little explanation. Like yeah. Practicing. Now, if you, now, different, different methods Buddha has mentioned. now if i to refer madupindika sutta that is in majjhima nikaya so buddha is telling if one is not encouraging this inner story and uh, not being carried away by the story 
Now, typically what happens is when we do something, so because of the stimulation, we get attached to the object and we start little thinking and we are promoting it. Ultimately, we can't stop it. So we become a victim of this thinking. So therefore, more and more, uh, we are strengthening the habit. Instead of doing that, so how about you, you are maintaining kind of a state Thinking is just think. Sorry, seeing is just seeing. Ditte ditte matta. So no, there is no, mm, there is no entanglement happen with the seeing. You are you are seeing. You are not blind. You can see, but there is no inner chatter being generated. You are, you are maintaining your inner silence. Mind was peaceful, but now I can see something. I I can see something, but. The mind does not go and involve with it. Mind does not go and entangle with it. And you are maintaining this inner peace. Similarly say there are sounds happening. You can hear but you are not making a story of, out of it. You are simply hearing it. So So likewise more and more you practice like that. So this inner peace become more strong. So you can live in even many sort of chaotic situations without losing this uh, inner peace, your integrity. You can maintain that. So Buddha is telling, if you are able to do that, that is the path to Raganusaya fading away, that is the, the, the tendency of the lust will fading away, tendency of the patiga, the ill will fade away, tendency of the avijja, the ignorance fade away. Everything he has listed all Anusaya telling that if you are able to avoid this inner chatter, if you are able to not to get involved in all these uh, you know stories, you are simply can maintain this. The Tamattam, Sute Sutamattam, Mute Mutamattam, Vinyate Vinyatamattam, likewise the kind of a higher training. So basically to avoid papancha, to prolifer proliferation. So if you are able to avoid prapancha, so then you are coming to a nippa pancha state that, that is the nibbana in a way. So more and more you are associating nippa pancha, non-proliferation. So then you are sort of um, weakening these inner trends, weakening these anusay, weakening these internal habits. So then we are, as a result, next time when you see less, less impact. Next time when you hear, less impact. So likewise the Anusaya will be fading away, Anusaya will be uh, diminishing. Do we feel that like uh, it's reducing, like uh, that's mean uh, when we are improving the emptiness, that's mean, uh, yeah. uh, that's mean in another way we are yes. improving it. Yes. Is that? Yeah, so that's, that's actually Buddha has mentioned, you know actually about the Parasupama based on the, you know, the X. Yeah, I, hand, the, handle of X. You are using more and more, more and, uh, than the smoothness. Exactly. So, uh -huh. I mean, it, that is why Buddha is telling it will take time. That's why we can't do it in a rush. Even though we know the path, we can't do it in a rush. Yeah. Because the, the development of the wisdom, the understanding of these habits, it's a kind of a careful practice. So you, you can do, develop... Um, uh, you know the concentration you can do uh, development of the morality maybe a little rush but development of the wisdom has to happen very carefully because it's a it's a very careful observation of the mind itself so you have to maintain some mindfulness and allow the mind to behave at the same time observe it and then only we can trace what are the habits there what are the internal habits tendencies available there and not promoting them, not getting victimized to them and simply allow it to fade away. So likewise, they have to arise, observe, fade away. Arise, observe, fade away. Likewise, it has to happen. So when are they coming to the surface? So, so that depends on the situation. Yeah, so that depends on the situation. situation. So it may, there may be karmic uh, sort of uh, influence coming through. There may be various other associations that uh, because of the good people coming through. There may be various, uh, say, incidents happening. 
due to various situation these are coming i mean this the the defilements or the anusaya come into the active state then only we are able to recognize them then only we are able to see them then only we are able to avoid getting victimized to them then as a result we are not promoting that habit and then slowly very little fade away so that's why buddha is telling i mean even though that uh, the carpenter is using the axe so he can't tell how much was worn out because of today's okay. work yeah even though you have practiced throughout the day therefore you can't uh, quantify how much of anusaya has faded yes. away because of today's practice yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you are asking that question uh, no <laughs> actually no <laughs> but on the other hand buddha says that because of the continuous usage of that axe after a couple of years that carpenter will understand okay now this handle has to be changed it has really worn out now i can't no more use it why now i have to fix a new new handle likewise buddha is telling if one is practicing continuously after a fair amount of practice once he look back say about one year ago how much i was entangled how much i was talking how much of rumination going on in the mind how much strongly i have attached how quickly i get angry so you are now comparing your your behavior say about one year ago how about now am i less attached now is my mind more clear am i more peaceful is the mind more peaceful is the clarity of the mind improved if there is kind of opening happen in the mind if there is less ignorance in the mind so likewise so you have to compare based on that you can understand so because of my practice so fair amount of uh, anusaya this tendencies have faded away so this is the only way <laughs> yeah now uh, it is said that really katina ceremony is the most meritorious act for lay people to do so can you explain the truth in it i know i don't believe in this elephants and uh, houses full of lights all that <laughs> so what is the truth in katina ceremony is it the most meritorious act is it a myth uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i actually i don't know where where i i need to check okay i also have heard that uh, preparing a katina robe yeah. is really meritorious and all these things yeah uh, i will check it and let you know <laughs> <laughs> right okay bante thank you <laughs> mhm when you are doing bodhi puja and like he used to scold everybody <laughs> scold singing and going <laughs> yes yes so <laughs> i have to protect both sides <laughs> because we are we are coming in a progressive path no so we can't immediately get into the uh, university level <laughs> we have to first go to the kindergarten then go to the uh, five uh, but that uh, scholarship <laughs> then grade 10 all levels and then a levels then the vipassana <laughs> yeah i mean in mithrikal actually we are more into uh, practice not much into the rituals but it does not mean that uh, we have to undermine that undermine the sense that uh, because i mean is a i mean offering a flower to a buddha and uh, say going refuge of the buddha so actually as i said in the velama sutta so buddha is giving the uh, the proper value it value to it not that rituals but rather honestly with some understanding if you are taking refuge of the buddha so that has some meaning it is not that only that to the historical buddha we are going for or going for refuge but it's kind of an understanding kind of wisdom that we are going going for refuge actually buddha represents the wisdom bodhi bodhi means the wisdom so he is the awakened one so now we are going going for refuge in this awakenedness in ourselves so rather than rather than being defiled rather than being ignorant 
now if we are mindful what is the real situation how, how what are what is what is happening right now so i am at this very moment maybe little awakened so i am going going for refuge of this awakenedness so going for refuge of the buddha and now buddha seeing the dhamma buddha understand what's really going on that is the teaching so that is the dhamma so you are going refuge for that and similarly the practitioners who are practicing who are developing these skills uh, say practically within themselves in their own hearts so i am going refuge for them Go- going for them so it's a kind of it has a very practical meaning so i think that if one is uh, going for refuge in that it has more meaning and uh, therefore buddha is keeping that state in a very high level it is extremely generating lot of merit yes mr yu <laughs> Bandi, you just uh, explained uh, the vipassana knowledge. The question is: um, Is the Buddha on the night he becomes a Buddha, uh, is it like seeing as seeing, hearing as hearing? Uh, on the night the Buddha becomes Buddha, is it the way how he remembered many many past lives? No, actually. I mean, the, the question is exactly like when he is doing vipassana. That is how he remember his past lives. No, actually, there are different different methods. So, remembering past lives or recalling past lives. So, Buddha has done in a different way by developing, uh, you know, the pubbe nivasa nusati, where recollection of the past lives can be done through uh, high level of concentration. So, abhinya. It's kind of a direct knowledge. Yeah. So using that, you going to the past, rather you are recollecting the far past lives. Mm-hmm. But vipassana point of view, Buddha has done, say, patisamupada and going through anapanasati, and all these other techniques are used for his own enlightenment. But after he became enlightenment, he has uh, preached various other techniques as well to attain. So, for himself, maybe anapanasati, maybe say parisham, the understanding of the parisham upada, and this may be, I can say, the most proximate causes for his own practice. But he has done various other practices as well. Now, say for example, in Deva Vitakka Sutta, Buddha is telling now he is recognizing some wholesome states of the mind as well as the unwholesome states of the mind, and he is categorizing these two into two groups. and uh, he is not now promoting the unwholesome side rather promoting the wholesome side so once he was able to fairly overcome the unwholesome side and strengthen the wholesome side even the wholesome side he has uh, let, let it be and keep the mind very quiet left the mind sort of associating the body coming to the posture just being inside so likewise various uh, his own practices are explained so can't say i mean i mean again these are the techniques only come, has come to the book how much hasn't come to the book so we can't simply say that buddha has practiced only this part so only with our limited knowledge and with our limited uh, information available in the book i am also telling <laughs> yeah. okay yeah true true But they could not uh, understand the reason for those past lives past like lives. particular sampada uh, whatever that's what i understood yes probably under, uh, recollecting past lives is not really the vipassana yes so actually that's why i mean even the i mean non buddhist even he, the other practitioners once they develop fair amount of uh, samatha skills there may be possibility of recollecting past lives by i mean it is i can't say it's a small practice it's a huge practice so really tiresome practice and you have to train the mind uh, to very high level in order to achieve it and then even he, he doesn't have to be a buddhist he doesn't have to follow the buddha and he can recollect past lives so buddha and the some arahants and other 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 followers still they too have had that 
and uh, but as you said you can't tell that is the vipassana so buddha has mentioned the development of the wisdom in various other techniques so knowing past lives for that is not a must okay if there is no any other question so we can wind up the question and answer session so thank you very much for attentive participation and uh, we'll uh, have the dhamma sermon at around 4:15 pm